Dzień dobry państwu, witam serdecznie wszystkich przybyłych, szczególnie studentów. Wiem, że część z was obowiązkowo tu przybyła, ale myślę, że część z was bardzo się cieszy z tego obowiązku, bo wykład, już to czuję przed skórę, będzie znakomity. Przedstawiam gościa, profesor Gerd Zedelis z Berliner Hochschule für Technik, profesor rysunku odręcznego. Przyjechał tu na zaproszenie Katedry Rysunku, Malarstwa i Rzeźby, a szerzej, a szerzej Wydziału Architektury. Nie będę przedłużał, oddaję głos profesorowi. Przywitajmy, żeby mu tak dodać animuszu, przywitajmy gościa opaskami. Dziękuję bardzo. Dziękuję bardzo. Dziękuję serdecznie for, for the invitation. Um, uh, I'm sorry, my English will be a little bit messy, but I prepared hundreds of slides, so I hope uh, that you will be overwhelmed with the visual information. First of all, I would like to thank uh, or to welcome all of you, dear students, dear professors, dear guests, uh, everybody. Mm -hmm. It's a big pleasure and uh, it's a big honor to see this crowded hall filled with with young faces, it's, it's, it's amazing, it's amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Zikowska and Professor Baranski for invitation, organization. Uh, I'm really, I treat it as a king here. Uh, and it's, it's a big honor and serdeczno dziękuję um, for this warm, um, yeah, welcoming. Okay, uh, let's uh, start. Do not expect in-depth theory in uh, uh, like, uh, Uh, of the subject of hand drawings. It will be more loose and hopefully for one or the other inspiring lecture, I hope, uh, um, with a lot of visual information. Um, uh, I already had a, a beautiful experience at the Cathedral of Rysunku uh, Malarstwa i Rzeźbi uh, uh, with uh, professors and amazing staff uh, 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 and, and, and actually very motivated and talented students. There are some impressions. I put it already uh, to show you uh, how much pleasure we had all together working Monday, Tuesday, and actually Wednesday, uh, today also. So uh, it's, it's, yeah, you, you, you are a great uh, university, a great cathedra, uh, perfect. So, um, okay, let's start with a uh, happy coincidence, how it all begins. Uh, last year in June, it was a uh, interesting. You know what kind of building it is, maybe, and where it is. No, <laughs> it is in Berlin. It's unique museum of, of hand drawings. Uh, it's called Museum of Hand uh, of Hand Drawings uh, Worldwide Unique Museum, Chorban Foundation, founded by Russian-born Berlin architect Sergei Chorban. And last year, it was a tenth anniversary uh, of the of the museum with very big, uh, actually, event. Um, and all the experts from all over uh, the Europe came uh, to see the lecture. Uh, they were also, you know this guy above? Who is this? <laughs> who, who knows that? <laughs> this is the famous one above. The, the others may be less famous, but also also famous. Huh? Just no. This is Peter Cook from uh, you know the the movement Archigram in the 60s, 70s. They uh, they very inventive uh, in uh, singing architecture and uh, yeah Peter Cook uh, is also now in his uh, how to say all the years passionate drawer. He draws a lot and he did a nice lecture. And this is Michael Frost from Denmark. He also talked about drawings and text and letters. And in this event, we met also professionals like Professor Zhikowska, Professor Baranski and his wife. And it was, it was an accidental meeting and Professor Zhikowska in her open manner told, oh, we could invite you. I thought, wow, this is a, this is a great idea. But you know how it goes in, in, in every day's uh, life. It can disappear, this idea. But suddenly, maybe half a year later, I receive a call from from Polish number. I thought, what it is? Is, is it spam number or, or, or what? I, I I did not want to pick up. And then it shimmered in the back 
of my head. Maybe it could be my uh, my uh, uh, new uh, uh, how to say the the, the, the yeah the, the, the Polish uh, the Polish professors yeah and it was so uh, it was the call from uh, from Professor Baranski and now I'm standing here <laughs> so this this little anecdote yeah so and um, at the event because it was a long event and sometimes you know if the times the time goes you don't know what to do I, I made a little sketch yeah? to maybe remember this event a little bit more deeply and uh, dear students I would like to invite you also I put some invitations on the table I invite you uh, to draw on my invitation something uh, uh, during my lecture it could be everything you can draw me you can draw ideas you can make notes everything what you like and maybe if the time allows we could make a little uh, presentation I can make some pictures and project it if, if the time allows we will see but I invite you to make a little scribbles on this little piece of paper okay uh, uh, as I uh, how to say as I um, had to I had to prepare this lecture and uh, I, I was quite nervous and I said where to start where to start to think about the lecture where to begin and I thought maybe it's a good idea to go back to the museum where it all begins and to be inspired for the lecture. Uh, this museum it's, uh, actually makes three exhibitions. The Museum of Architectural Drawings in Berlin makes three exhibitions per year. And um, uh, it's not only an aim to show it to the professional world of architects, but also to show it to general public, also to, to make the architectural sketching more interesting for general public for all the people so and i went three weeks ago i went back to the museum and found an exhibition of in berlin in berlin and maybe in germany famous architectural office sauerbruch and hutton you know that office uh, and uh sauerbruch and hutton uh hutton they made also hand drawings and it was nice exhibition of these hand drawings uh and in on the top level I found myself in sort of uh, in um, spatial scheme spatial diagram spatial illusion and I thought ah that's the idea to prepare my lecture I have to make a diagram to make a scheme to make a special a spatial scheme and I did it can you recognize something <laughs> no <laughs> actually not I had to do I had to think a little bit more I thought I have to think a little bit more to think a little bit deeper and then I prepared another scheme It, uh, I, I thought about what kind of aspects you could, what what is the meaning of hand drawing? What kind of aspects you could put on the sheet of paper and visualize them? And it uh, it was a dense sheet, you know. Uh, it's really it, there is a lot of aspects to speak, which provides the power within hand drawings. Uh, but actually, we only have one and a half hour, maybe two. So I had to reduce myself, and we will pick up some of the aspects. And talk about it. We will pick some aspects and go a little bit deeper. And uh, yeah, that's the plan of today. And actually, we could start with this one. What uh, is brain hand connection? I think this is uh, one of the most important, how do I say, roles of the hand drawing. Maybe the, the most important one. Yeah? Uh, let me explain. As a creative people, we always uh, have ideas. Yeah? The ideas uh, in our brains, they change us. And if we do nothing, new ideas will override our old ideas and uh, 
this is like a like a like a hard disk of computer always overwrite with something uh, so it's very important to make a connection between the brain to a hand uh, into a pencil and to bring the ideas to outside to two dimensional sheet of paper to sketch them so this is this is a, a part of creative process how the creative process starts and then if we have the first sketch we could again observe it uh, we observe it we enrich it with uh, more ideas and we put it again to a paper the circle is closed and the sequence of idea founding can start yeah? and as an architect you have actually to draw a lot you have also to discard a lot to find an optimum solution yeah? i will show you some of my very they are very rough sketches actually idea finding sketches not necessary has to be pretty they are very very this is the process of thinking and finding uh, something and sometimes it starts with very rough uh, in uh, maybe sometimes an ugly sketch huh? so like this if you want to design a chair maybe yeah, you have to fill first 10 pages of, uh, of the sketchbook huh? so in this uh, this discard discarded sketches the some of the architects they don't appreciate it very much but a lot of the architects use the sketches and um, I brought for you a little quiz. Uh, idea sketches, uh, rough sketches of famous architects. Maybe we can play together and somebody uh, can answer me uh, who, to whom belongs, for example, these sketches. You know that maybe? I have to drink a little. Somebody an idea? <laughs> no very dynamic maybe sometimes you can also recognize maybe the buildings one famous building in germany in munich you see above in the middle okay shall i reveal <laughs> this is uh wolf d pricks and the group the office is called Korb himmelblau they are more extravagant uh, um, and um, more dynamic like the sketches they're very dynamic and very rough and the architecture looks almost the same huh? <laughs> you know Kurt Himmelblau? oh maybe you can maybe you can uh, google it later this very precise lines you see how uh, maybe you see uh, you recognize the buildings uh, this is a very famous world famous architect which builds everywhere i think i don't know if in poland something but in germany and in in, in the uk is you is a uk architect uh, uh, foster norman foster sir norman foster uh, it's very architectural man manner of sketching you see sir norman foster so this one You should know it. You should know it. Liebeskind, yeah, is a Polish-born U.S. architect, uh, and uh, I think his sketches with uh, sort of good focal points, they're very convincing, very, very, uh, very nice. Yeah, Daniel Liebeskind. Uh, a lot of buildings also here, Jüdisches Museum in, in Germany. You see, uh, and this is uh, the in Dresden building and. Actually, he did uh, for the ground zero, the, the urban planning. So, and last but not least, I brought something in color. <laughs> because uh, we deal sometimes also with color. Uh, who is this? You know, the man? Calatrava, uh, super. Santiago Calatrava. So, let's have a look how Calatrava works. To sketch is a 
mental exercise. You could also write, or you could also compute, uh, compose music, or whatever. You see, it's a mental exercise uh, who goes directly from your mind uh, into your hand in a very spontaneous way. And probably is one of the most efficient ways, you know, to cap the idea and the vision that you have in your mind and also even to analyze it, to investigate, to let it uh, change and transform. The drawings, maybe in the beginning, they are very, uh, uh, um, very imprecise. They became, with the time, more and more precise. They follow maybe much more the intuition. And then, with the time, they became more and more construction drawings. Yes, this is a little piece of uh, how he is working, you know, with the with the with the white. Uh, how do you say this in English? This white, <laughs> very classical way. In in interesting thing is written here: Kalatawa does not work with computers at all. He made thousands of watercolor drawings, and um, he says by his own. Uh, I refuse to work with computer, and I have a luck because I have an office and I have people who transfer it then to a computer and he appears to important meetings with his watercolors and convince clients uh, uh, in, in the circle of uh, with, with other concurrency members, maybe offices, uh, which brings uh, cat drawings. He convinces always and wins always competitions with his watercolors. Uh, it's uh, watercolor drawings. Uh, so this is uh, like... Um, Kalatawa is a very interesting personality because he is actually artist, he is uh, architect and he is also engineer. Therefore, this architecture, what, uh, what he made, is, looks like an uh, artistic engineering solution. Uh, it's an interesting kind of uh, personality. I would like to show you uh, one of my, uh, yeah, I think, one of my favorite architectural offices. I don't know if you know uh, them. This is Heatherwick Studio, Tom, Thomas Heatherwick. They made some famous, uh, like, vessel in New York, this sculpture. It's something between architecture, art, and design. They also design a buses, for example. And what is very interesting in this office, this is nowadays office, uh, not, not old. They always use the hand drawing and the analog techniques to develop the, their ideas, uh, starting with a sketch, starting with a simple model, and uh, ending up in this kind of realization, which is also very creative. Uh, the approach, the funny approach of them, they made also UK pavilion in, uh, in, Shang, in, in China, in Shanghai, for the World Expo 2010. And the idea started with this, with this. sometimes the idea is really, really playful and maybe a little bit stupid also started from this uh, uh, this uh, uh, play-doh uh, uh, play um, how to say this uh, uh, puppet which you can put uh, the play-doh and you can squeeze it and the hair uh, starts to grow <laughs> and then they decided to do a pavilion with thousands of acrylic hairs 7.5 meter long acrylic roads and this is something what you say it's 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 like a crazy idea but they with this artistic approach, with this hand drawings and with these models, with this uh, with this playful games, they follow the idea until the end. You know? And I discovered three years ago at an advertisement, and I found it very interesting. They are searching for an architecture illustrator full time with strong hand drawing skills, and I think this is the part of their success. The hand drawing as a start. Uh, and as a continuous implementation in the, the workflow, this is the part of the uh, big success in interesting projects and in, in sensual projects. Yeah, they design also a buses for the, for London. They designed this double decker buses. Really interesting. And this is the vessel sketch above uh, from New York. 
And I would like to close the, 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 the topic of the brain-hand connection with Peter Merkel. He's a, he's a Swiss yeah, university professor and also architect. He says, drawing is not about knowledge, it's not about skills. Drawing is thinking, is discovering, searching for ideas. Everybody can draw. Everybody has a folded sheet of paper and a little pen. And he can sketch out an initial idea, and this could cost later 20 million francs the clients. Yeah, this is amazing what architects can develop from nothing with the first sketch. It can become a really, really absolutely expensive project. Yeah? And he's, he says he is not talented in sketches, they're very, very dodgy, but. He said, without the sketches, he couldn't achieve something. He couldn't achieve uh, realizations of his projects. They were very important in, in thinking and searching process. So, what is hand drawing additional out of my diagram? This is also unique handwriting. Everybody of you has a unique handwriting. Is spontaneity, is looseness, is imperfection. Uh, this is also speed. It's very fast, brain hand connection, effectiveness, and it contains a necessary part of reduction. You need this reduction before, because the reduction offers you more imagination. Okay, this was the first brain hand connection. And now the question is how we can do this brain hand connection. We have actually to know how to do this and we have to learn to, to learn the two dimensional environment and to, and, and to learn to transfer it to two dimensional surface to our sheet of paper. And we talk about now about the perception, about observation, about the perception of space. This is our society and this is a perception nowadays. Huh? We all. <laughs> We're all in the in in the public. Uh, we're all like this, no? uh, and the little fact is, 2023 worldwide is made 1.6 trillion photographs a year. This is like 12 zeros or something like that. It's it's not it's not imaginable uh, amount of photographs we made nowadays, and uh, it's approximately 4.3 billion photographs a day. Linda Henkel, one researcher, one US researcher, found it out that if we go to a museum and we make photographs, we remember less about the expositions and about, uh, we, we remember less details, we, we remember the situation more or less. So the, the, what we wanted to do, we wanted to capture the situation, but we miss it actually due, due to photographing all the time. Yeah? Better way to capture the three-dimensionally, three-dimensional environment is actually to slow down, to observe it, and to draw it. Yeah? Uh, if we do that, um, we look more careful to things. We uh, look twice. Uh, we slow down. We recognize more details and. I think this is an important way to learn the sketching skills. I will show you a few sketches out of my sketchbooks. Um, and this is my advice to you, young students. Um, if you go out, maybe you can carry a little sketchbook with you, put it out. If you see something, draw it. You will recognize it later. You will remember later this uh, architectural situation or something what you like to remember much better. Some of the sketches are really thumbnail sketches, some are bigger, some are quicker, some are slower. And uh, this is not only, it's not only interesting to draw for us architects architecture, it's also inspiring for us to draw completely different things, which has nothing to do with architecture. Maybe persons or flowers or maybe some interesting sculptures which you also have in the department uh, you know, of Rizunku you have nice 
antique sculptures, or maybe to go to the Technic Museum, you have beautiful uh, airplane museum and also observe completely different shapes, which also has influence on architectural uh, designing process, consciously or unconsciously. Sometimes you, yeah, catch up an idea and you say, Ooh, maybe this is this could be a building or something like that. You know, these old sketches, uh, which I did somewhere, somewhere, yeah, during my walking tours. If you have a possibility, uh, this is my advice, even better advice, to catch a car, to, get, uh, to take a car, or a train, or a plane, or even a boat, and go out to world, to white world, and to see other cultures, to see other countries, do that. It will bring you not only a wider horizon, it will bring you also uh, how to say, uh, you will learn much more, you will meet people, you will get in, co in touch with them, um, you see other cultures, it's enrich you uh, enormously. It's enrich you enormously and if you, if you draw on location, you are also a big attraction. Uh, as a draw smile, you are a big attraction. And the people come to you and then the conversations are starting and then <laughs> then you learn the locals. That's very important. Huh? Uh, I show you this is this is there are my travels. Uh, you see some this is India. It's very hard to draw in India because sometimes uh, 20 uh, or 30 people is coming and they standing, uh, they have time and then uh, <laughs> you don't see the motif. <laughs> uh, and uh, I show you some drawings. Uh, from all over the world, uh, I had I had the luck to visit some places, not all the places, but uh, it was very inspiring for me, and I tried to catch and to draw on location. Um, you can maybe recognize this is Valencia, this is Portugal, this is New York, and this is Myanmar. Uh, Myanmar is a very nice country, also with the golden Schwedagon Pagod. Uh, it's uh, uh, very interesting to see also Asian culture. This is also India, Myanmar and New York. Some travel sketches. And this is Georgia and Armenia. We also did a trip as with the students there. And even Warsaw or Belgrade, above Istanbul and Shanghai with crazy railroads, which uh, already architectural uh, like. To mention that not only me traveling, but also a young, you know whom, uh, who belongs to sketches? It's written above. <laughs> it's not a secret. This is the young Corbusier, Jean Ray. Uh, his name was Jean Ray. Uh, he's uh, studying uh, in the young years, and uh, he decides to travel in Europe, in, in eastern in eastern parts of Europe, and in, in, in southeastern Europe. Uh, and uh, he perceived the environment through sketching, and uh, it was big influence on his creative process. Uh, he uh, he he catched so much that uh, later in his work career uh, that was a very very big influence yeah <clears throat> so um grab a book go out and sketch and not only architect sketching uh, and also also uh, general people um it's um it's a community of uh of actually of it's it's a community of people who wants to percept uh, 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 environment through sketching. This uh, is called urban sketching and it's still growing and growing. In this very fast times of photographs, uh, more and more people want to slow down and to uh, to draw, uh, to perceive the, the environment through sketching. And this community is worldwide uh, uh, very big. You see the Berlin uh, uh, meeting last year and 
even in Poland as one community. Uh, um, so this shows that the people want to slow down, want to sketch and to, to perceive the environment with other kinds, uh, with other, uh, yeah, with other manner. Good. Now we uh, slowly uh, go to my like favorite team. This is uh, my favorite topic. This is vision. If if we if we now have the skills uh, drawing on location with trains, spatial drawing, we can now invent our worlds. Uh, and uh, this is uh, one of my favorite topics: vision, utopia, architectural fantasy, which gives really a power. Uh, to our hand drawings yeah? and um, on the on the on the event on the archivision event uh, uh, one uh, colleague professor told um, what is uh, for him the drawing the drawing is a wonderful opportunity to escape from reality and create your own fantastic worlds in which you can do whatever you like without compromises. Without compromise, you can do whatever you like, and this is this is this is the freest, the freest way to create your fantasy worlds. And this is this is the most interesting advantage of freehand drawing. Right? And, the, and, and in my opinion, uh, uh, this is this is very nice, very nice topic for architects. So this is an architectural fantasy actually from 1600 and. Uh, uh, from the Baroque type, 1670s or something, is is uh, Giuseppe uh, uh, Galli di Vienna. It's one uh, architect, uh, theatrical engineer, theatrical engineer, and he was uh, drawing uh, like visions like this, uh, which is yeah based on on the architectural style of the century, and he influences actually very much, very well known. Uh, visionary uh, draughtsman of the of the 18th century this is you know the Giovanni Battista Piranesi Piranesi was famous with his uh, like uh, s set stage designs of uh, um, prisons prison series uh, inspired but set set stage designs uh, uh, and uh, they are very fa famous architectural fantasies in the early years, actually. Uh, if we, uh, on this historical path, I would like to show you also the Antonio San Elia. Uh, this is also one of my uh, favorite role models, which also inspired me. You have to consider it's about 1914, uh, and for that time it was actually quite conceptual ideas. Uh, this is uh, an example of Milan, Città Nuova. Città Nuova uh, was like a new modern city with uh, actually uh, airport on top on a rail station with skyscrapers, with elevated railroads, uh, all these ideas. He put it in this very, very uh, vivid sketches. And Antonio Santelli inspires actually a lot of modern and postmodern architects. And now we came to my, but not only my, but a, a lot of architects, absolutely role model. And this is Lebeus Woods. Lebeus Woods was really a sharp thinker, architect, draughtsman. Uh, uh, above his, above his, uh, how to say, above his time and his skills, he he is a very, very deep. Uh, how to say? Uh, um, yeah, yeah, deep thinker, and he he created this dystopic worlds and and absolute amazing forms with with perfect visualization to hand drawings. This is everything is hand drawing, uh, and um, he never wanted to treat to be treated as an uh, as an fantasy uh, drawer. He wanted always to be treated as an architect, uh, which. Uh, designs under unconventional conditions. Uh, he told all the, I, I'm designer, normal designer, I'm architect, I design under extremely conditions. Uh, this dystopian, dystopian worlds. 
and he never wanted to, to be treated as a draughtsman or, or as a drawing teacher. He wanted to be an architect and always had these architectural ideas. So this fantastic, if you have an opportunity, look at his buildings and, and his drawings. Actually, he never, he never built something. He only built one, one thing in China, but uh, in cooperation with Stephen Hall, he built it one part of the building actually. So, and the other thing which also creates fantastic worlds is actually a cinematic uh, movie architecture, theater, uh, everything where you can, where you have less boundaries or even no boundaries. Look at this guy. Is it not a dream job to sit with a cigar and a pencil and to draw fantastic worlds? This is Ken Adam. Uh, it's a German, uh, uh, British film architect, which, uh, invents the fantastic worlds to very, very dynamic sketches uh, with markers for James Bond movies of 60s and 70s. Yeah? All the James Bond movies were enriched with his fantasies, with his strong fantasies. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of uh, things that are inspiring and I, maybe I, I will talk uh, only about one last uh, interesting concept designer is Duak Chang. He was an art director of Star Wars uh, films in the late, late 90s, beginning of the 2000 uh, years. And the Star Wars has this uh, absolutely amazing copic marker aesthetic. Uh, and uh, with this, uh, he created everything from a, from a figure to a, to, a, to a spaceship and uh, also uh, to actually, how to say, uh, complex worlds, worlds, fantastic worlds, fantastic architecture. And I think this kind of presentation with, with, this, with this copic aesthetic is also very good suited for, for architectural presentation. You could take it and you could draw it uh, quite quick uh, for your projects, if you want. Oh. So, uh, <clears throat> then um, this this was overwhelming me and I was, I was inspired by this architect and I said, oh, I have, I have to take my pencil, I have to fly. I go to, I have to fly in, in the sky, I have to fly to other planets and see what I can do. And I started, uh, how far I can, uh, how far I did fly. I started to invent my own walls. I started to form gigantic, gigantic formations in, 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 in platforms floating in space. Um, and, um, yeah, the fascination of these three complex forms inspired by this, uh, by these examples was always the driving, uh, force for me to create something new, uh, uh, new language, new form language. Uh, uh, yeah, and to, to give the imagination to fly and, and without boundaries to, to, to make a, to make a, how to say, to expand abilities. So, um, then, uh, yeah, nature, and machine aesthetics uh, merge into a, uh, spatial formations uh, with the help of ink. I flew with marker and fine liner over cities, cityscapes, and I saw uh, actually also uh, uh, tall towering structures. I reached uh, and landed. Oh, I reached and landed at a, uh, in a canyon of a rock formation, and I thought I have to have a closer look there. So I looked around and decided I have immediately go to the earth and change and change our cities, our world, 
intervent uh, because uh, you know and nowadays we have this uh, I, uh, I can say this uh, effic efficiency regime uh, which makes uh, to look cities like uh, interchangeable all the all all is based on, on, on money and all is based on efficiency and uh, the new architecture looks everywhere at the same time and I I thought I have to intervene. I have to change how could the cityscape cityscapes look more interesting. What has to be done that the cityscapes looks more interesting? How uh, can the massive stone houses be broken uh, with filigree structures? There are a lot of interesting ideas you can you can think in the city. What would happen if we wouldn't have uh, like gravity, like on my cosmic journals before? What would happen uh, uh, in the city? Or uh, what happens uh, with these growing metropolitan cities where the living space is less and less and less? How dense the cities can get? This was the manner to think about it and to, to think about um, through drawing, through a creative drawing. So, in the end, I would say um, we have, we need to build on with more power and to change uh, the existing architecture to create creativity, to creative ideas. Uh, this also built on uh, uh, con uh, concrete examples in Berlin. Uh, yeah, this is uh, this was the, the the imagination. This was the the flying uh, in space uh, and putting floating with a with a with a pen on paper. And um, yeah, I invite you also to to be to to be brave and to let your imagination free and and to put amazing ideas um, if you have in mind directly on piece of paper. Now we uh, uh, we um, go further, and the next topic, uh, which is maybe interesting because nowadays uh, uh, it could be for you also interesting, uh, the topic of the computers, uh, interaction between analog and digital media. Uh, we cannot uh, discard the fact that the computers are actually the tools of this century. Uh, but the problem with the computers uh, is that they have their own aesthetics. You know, they, their own aesthetics of visualization, their own aesthetics of, of problem solution, which are more pure, more purely, more, more based on facts. They are not so sensitive, they are not so emotional. And this ping pong between analog and digital medias was interesting for me because I always wanted somehow to think how to break this pure aesthetics of the computer with the help of hand sketching and to make the computer more sensitive and more emotional. Huh? What we can do, what we can do, we can actually take the advantage of digital speed and uh, we can draw, there's a lot of interesting applications you can find, we can draw digitally. Huh? This is, this is, uh, this is, well, very simple thing. You can also take a tablet, which is not really direct. Direct, more direct is the, the, the piece of paper, but you can also take a tablet and draw there uh, and visualize and, and, and color and make a collage. Make a collage between like analog sketch. You could make that very fast. You can color it very fast. This is the advantage of, well, for example, architecture presentation. This is a beautiful way if you want to do something uh, uh, lively, something vivid, you could make a simple sketch and you can color it with computer and you could do, you could put it as a presentation sketch. These simple sketches are made for architectural offices. Yeah? This is just a hand drawing with a few surfaces, touches, uh, and this one, I think the simplest one, the sketchiest one, uh, one even a competition. So this is not always the most uh, complicated 3D rendering which convince the clients. Sometimes it's a simple sketch 
And I think to use this combination of hand drawing and extensions with the computer, the collage with the computer, it's always a good way to present like architectural projects. Yes. Uh, okay. Now uh, I want to show the cloud project in this topic, computer hand. I always find fascinating how the cloud, which is a droplets of water, can form such as sculptures in sculptures in sky. You know, they form amazing sculptures. Look at that, look at that. It's 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 amazing. And I wanted to reinterpret that in my way. Uh, I wanted to to do like a cloud project. Uh, uh, this is the reinterpretation in my way, which started actually with sketches. Uh, the sketches was the the, the, the init initial begin, and then I thought maybe I can use a simple sculpturing program uh, on the tablet, uh, which I can very intuitive work with and, and, and form a sculpture. And then this is actually digital surface. And digital surface, yeah, you, you can turn it, you, you can you can you can see it, but but it's not not haptic, not a haptic. Uh, and I thought how to make it haptic, uh, and I found a way maybe to engrave it with a laser engraver on a board. Then you have a relief. Then you have something which is which you can touch. This is something haptic, uh, uh, haptical. Uh, so from engraver, you can put again the hand drawing skills and to make this aesthetic more and more look emotional, artistic and uh, yeah, subjective, put colors on that and maybe make it even really unperfect. You know? This is a cloud project, <laughs> just to show how the ping pong, this is really the ping pong digital analog, which we always do reach or maybe gives us more satisfying results and we, we break this aesthetics of the of the redu reduced computer. Another thing uh, which also interesting is that the, the, the way of presentation architecture will be in, in the future maybe not like we do it now with 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 posters and with with with, with something with, with projections. It will be maybe Apple developed now the, the glasses. Uh, it will be maybe one-to-one -one, uh, with VR, uh, virtual reality and augmented reality. And this is the way maybe we dive in, in the buildings in, in the future. And we will see the buildings from inside and look around and we will standing in, uh, yeah, in the architecture through these glasses. But uh, the problem is still with the aesthetics, the computer, I don't know if you, if you you try this glass, it's still this sober, sober aesthetic of, of clean walls. And I thought, uh, how, why not to, to go with glasses into a sketch? Uh, maybe it's also a nice idea to, to dive in into a sketch world. And uh, yeah, let's see what happens.
this uh, I had to uh, somehow simulate because I cannot wear the glasses and, and put my eyes to you. Therefore, I did a little movie, uh, a little slow movies of this uh, uh, going around. But it visualized the idea that you can actually, if you want, you can draw also a spheric panorama, which is projected as equirectangular, a flat projection. You can take the grid, and if, if you want, you can, you can just draw a 360 degree uh, 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 view. Uh, and then you can, there is a simple, uh, how do I say, simple, simple project, projectors, they can, uh, even if glasses, or you can also do it on screen, you can walk around and dive in into this drone architecture. Yeah, this is uh, panoramic. And now, uh, maybe as a sub, uh, sub, uh, sub team uh, of the digital interaction, maybe we should also touch the artificial intelligence also. Uh, this, is, uh, this is very interesting because uh, you know, uh, we we uh, in the in the next few in the next five years, I think artificial intelligence will become a very very uh, gain to a very important uh, topic. Uh, it's but we 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 have to see it as a tool. This is this is like a like a digital digital tool which uh, maybe um, helps us to solve complex problems, more complex problems, and um, <clears throat> I think uh, that. Uh, yeah, uh, th this visualizes actually a um, very interesting, uh, uh, like uh, fact that uh, we with we hold something uh, like photographs for for something very objective, yeah, and sketches from something subjective. But with artificial intelligence, maybe it turns uh, other way around, because this uh, this looks like photos, but they are made out of. Uh, 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 with artificial intelligence, see? and now this is like subjective, and this is maybe more objective to sketch. Uh? Uh, so, um, or we will learn it. Uh, this is in the beginning. We have to, uh, we have to learn to see this. Uh, this how to say? Uh, um, how to say this in English? To see this. Uh, uh, yeah, this 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 cheating. Yeah, to see this cheating, this is maybe somehow, if Photoshop came out, everybody also d did not recognize. Is it now uh, the the Photoshop collage or is it the real photo? Maybe we will train to recognize that, yeah? and then we see. Okay, this is the artificial intelligence. But uh, at the moment, it's like some uh, like photographs. Uh, is something subjective becoming something subjective on sketches more objective? Uh, <clears throat> yes. Um, what is interesting to think about it? And I already uh, by accident uh, spoke with Jegos. Uh, you doing already that? There is a. Uh, I think in the computer did not kill the mouse, and artificial intelligence will. Either not kill this. Uh, 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 no, no, computer will. The, the mouse did not kill the the, the sketch. The, the pencil. The, the 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 mouse did not kill the pencil. And artificial intelligence would either not kill the pencil. Even maybe sketching becoming more important. Why? Because the artificial intelligence will faster solve annoying, time-consuming problems. Um, Maybe we can achieve that we are going from sketch directly into transformation to the computer. That's what Calatrava always pushes to the workers that they implement it into a computer. It maybe could uh, could transfer it through artificial intelligence. I put it in a very simple uh, open source software, uh, Control Net, and. Uh, under conditions like do me a painting, do me a uh, 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 relief, or even maybe a little three-dimensional impression, or even a realistic rendering. Yeah? And this is what artificial intelligence could be. You could transfer it directly from a sketch to uh, a three-dimensional rendering without sitting hours and hours on computer and putting everything in 3D 
uh, software. Uh, this is maybe the future, I don't know. Uh, that what you also, I, I talked with Gregor and you also experimenting with that, I will show you later. Uh, yeah, the control net, uh, this is from uh, Stable Diffusion, it's open source software, you could also always try also to experiment with that if you want. Uh. Let's see other results. How you can get from a sketch maybe to artistic impression or to something which is more wood, woody, wooden uh, style. It's still a little bit, yeah, you know, this, this is the beginning of the artificial intelligence. It's not, but maybe you can achieve also from sketch directly a rendering without the steps uh, in between. And maybe this could be later be already a three-dimensional model. You can turn it around and walk through, I think, the artificial intelligence will get better and better. I'll show you other results. Just just a prompt what you can do from a sketch, from abstract sketch. This is even, I don't know what it is, but the, you can reach already the dimensionality. So interesting to play. Look, uh, not bad. Huh? <laughs> okay, and you did it also. Uh, I thought uh, the, the Gregor, uh, 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 um, how to say, uh, showed me uh, the results, and I think it's very fascinating. But you can, the students, you students, which year was it? Uh, third? Second year. Second year. Second year, and this is amazing, I think. The topic was actually the man who I showed before. It was uh, uh, Archigram, and it was Peter Cook, no? Peter Cook. So, even maybe you could also make simply an animation. It's also a little bit still a little bit dodgy, but you could maybe later make from a sketch an animation. Has drawing, sketching is pleasure, is magic, it's freedom, it's poesy, it's DNA, all of us. And with this, uh, like last top, last, uh, how to say, last, uh, last words, I would like to show uh, my teaching in Berlin, what we do with the students and how we teach drawings. And uh, yeah. Uh, how we create works, and um, if you start, uh, if the students start at uh, at our university, at our department, I the show always first a little advertisement movie for them, and I would like to share this movie with you, and I think it's you will get the atmosphere and maybe the essence of what the teaching of of me in Berlin is. <laughs>
So, you have an impression uh, about the teaching, uh, and uh, actually, it's a little bit different than at your place. You already have very hard exam. Uh, Professor Hofstra told me, and you already have this knowledge of drawing. Yeah, and I, I as I was doing the. Uh, the lectures uh, with you, uh, I was amazed how talented you are, how good skills you have. Uh, oh, <laughs> how good skills you have, drawing skills. Uh, you are really, really good. Uh, um, yeah, technical, very, very good. Uh, in, in Germany, we actually start at zero. Uh, the, the people, they maybe lost 10 years ago the drawing skills. So uh, we have to uh, re rebuild it yeah step by step and uh, some of them do not reach the 100 percent but we are also happy if they reach a 60 or 50 percent of that yeah? and um, the observational drawing is very important in this case that they learn this two-dimensional seeing that they understand the rules the perception of the space transformation three-dimensional two-dimensional walls into a two-dimensional surface yeah? So we do, as you see, we do a lot of observational drawings and we divide it, yeah, roughly, roughly because a year has different uh, times and uh, there is winter and summer and in winter we divide it and do more uh, interiors. This is more the interior theme in winter. We also go to the museums uh, and, and, and draw there to the churches. Uh, we try to to leave also our university because all the time is sometimes for the students it's 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 good to go out again and to see uh, the built uh, environment and we try to experiment with medias where well, I, I told i tell them that we that they have to also to buy a lot of stuff to find their own handwriting in, in sketching this 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 topic of this is the topic of the of the interiors also, some of the buildings uh, done this semester, like this, from Grimshaw. This is an, this is an international, uh, what do you say, international business uh, place, and the uh, Neue Nationalgalerie from uh, from uh, Mies van der Rohe. Now rebuild it very well. And in summer we go out and draw exterior. Yeah, you do it also here. Uh, uh, you have a compact week, no, and uh, we can do it. Yeah, also often uh, we draw exterior everywhere in Berlin. These are student examples. Again, student examples. Yeah. Yeah, and. Um, With this knowledge, actually, we also invent. We do inventions. We do uh, we we do uh, games with sketching by creating interesting worlds, playing with with forms and structures, making collages. This is also what we do, and this is actually bachelor bachelor first year. We have uh, I have a. Two courses in bachelor's and one one course in master degrees and in master de uh, now first in bachelor actually we do also uh, models this is like a jezbri like sculpturing uh, is also all together but we can do only models like this out of we don't we don't have possibilities to do it with clay we do it more with with paper or with styropor and this is also a, a a successful thing because you create a sketch then you build a model it's like a kind of success you build something and jump this is very important for us architects to jump from two-dimensional into a three-dimensional and then from three-dimensional jump again into a two-dimensional so uh, that you can again observe it and make again an observational sketch this is this this the, the ping pong games we play also often with students and we have at our school we have the possibility also to go for one week abroad to visit other countries uh, like uh, excursions uh, one week excursions um, and uh, with the students we already travel it to for example um, portugal lisbon uh, this is uh, armenia this is georgia uh, tbilisi 
and we went to Shanghai. We went also to Warsaw. We never have been to Krakow, but maybe uh, I would like to come with the students to Krakow also. Uh, it's very inspiring. It's very good for the students uh, to see different cultures. So we have also master degree. In a master degree, we uh, can go more into the depth. We have more time. We are more relaxed. We can do maybe a longer painting or do a print workshop or something like that. Uh, we can work a little bit more uh, yeah, relaxed. We can do also a big collective works, which is also uh, connects the students together. Collective works with through drawing, uh, the, they like it very much, they enjoy it very much because they have to speak with each other and to collaborate with each other. And uh, in master, we also play with digital tools, uh, from analog to a digital and even with artificial intelligence. This is all the master uh, student works, uh, uh, in this case, um, yeah, a little impression. Okay, and in, in the end, actually, it's uh, good to present all the works in, uh, in exhibitions. So there are a few slides of our exhibitions. Huh? Yeah, uh, dear students, dear professors, I've reached the end and uh, Thank you for listening. Uh, uh, I think, I hope that you do not sit now in front of the computer, but grab the pencil or pen and see where it can lead you, uh, which direction it can lead you. Uh, I hope you liked it. Uh, we have time also, I don't know, did you uh, did some sketches? Maybe you could, uh, <laughs> uh, who wants to show me, <laughs> who wants to show, show me a sketch? <laughs> Ktoś z Państwa ma szkice do pokazania? Proszę bardzo. Jeszcze więcej, kto szkicował? Proszę. Śmiało. To, kto szkicował, profesor zachęcał, ja odbiorę. Proszę mi podać, podać, podać. Już tam podejdę, już podejdę. Zbieram, zbieram. Czy da się tutaj rzucić na ekran te szkice? Pytam się do panów tutaj z obsługi. Proszę, kto szkice chce podać profesorowi? Kto jeszcze? Może ktoś z antresoli też zejdzie, jeżeli szkicował na antresoli. Wszyscy? Jeszcze tutaj? Profesor rozkłada tutaj to na... Podaje więcej. Anna, po, pomóż rozłożyć profesorowi tutaj na... Kto jeszcze chce? Kto jeszcze szkice podaje? Tu gdzieś widziałem, tak? Wszyscy? Profesor się pyta, czy wyrażacie, wyrażacie zgodę na to, żeby wziął te szkice? You would like to take this? No. Uh, it would be nice or uh, I can make a photos, a better photos of that and then you can... Uh, a, czy pan uh, profesor chce lepsze techniczne, pod względem technicznym do swoich... I would, like to I would like to show you some. Pan profesor Sedelis zgodził się też odpowiedzieć na wasze pytania, także jeżeli ktoś ma pytania, to proszę się zgłosić, pan profesor z przyjemnością odpowie. Uh, I said I that you will, you agreed for answering the questions later. Very nice. I love I love your your ideas uh, and your uh, you, uh, you, uh, it's an amazing exhibition. Actually, I, uh, I would like I would like to show all all the. Uh. Very nice. Very nice. It's a nice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
I did say. In the rush, I don't know what I did, but uh, look at that. This is amazing. I don't know if you have to rush. I don't know. If, uh, <laughs> I think I did not get every one, but they are beautiful. They're just beautiful. Okay. No. Thank you so much. Uh, maybe we'll go also to uh, questions. Ale chwilę jeszcze po polsku, bo ja tylko wiem, jaka, jak ta historia się zaczęła i wiem, że niezwykła intuicja pani profesor Rzechowskiej, że się tak wyrażę, wyselekcjonowała pana profesora, także jest matką chrzestną tego wykładu i chciałbym, żebyście podziękowali osobiście z oklaskami pani profesor Rzechowska, bo bez niej, bez niej nie byłoby tego wykładu niezwykłego w treści i tego wspaniałego tutaj E, 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 wspaniałej wizyty Pana Profesora. A teraz, e, teraz także ja również bardzo dziękuję, jestem pod dużym e, wrażeniem, że to tak wszystko się pięknie rozwija w ciągu tego tygodnia i ćwiczenia i wykład. I teraz kto z Państwa, e, kto z państwa chce zadać pytanie Panu Profesorowi? No odważnie, ktoś ma jakieś pytanie? Czy musicie to wszystko przemyśleć? Na następnie. Nie widzę, nie widzę żadnej podniesionej ręki. Rozumiem, że wykład był tak piorunujący, że po prostu poszło wam wszystko, jak to się mówi, wpięty i, i was zamurowało. They are so shocked that there is no uh, questions, ok? Ok. A jest, jest jedno, jedno pytanie. How long did you learn to draw? Me? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, actually, actually, I started as a child, but it was very, yeah, very, not so good. And I, I, I was very. I think you have to have this fascination. Yeah? If you have this like fascination for something, you can develop it later more quickly. I started actually really developed the skills I started uh, to do during my studies. At the first semester, where I had I had a very ascetic, uh, interesting professor. He could draw very well, and he inspired. He inspires me, and I wanted also. You have to have the role models, you know. You have to have the role models, and then he thought. Uh, I, th I thought it. It's nice. I would like to draw in the same way, and I, I had the passion to do that. So I think the the big progress was started with the, with the, with studies. With studies, I, I I did the progress, and it was. I can tell you, ages ago, it was. Uh, 1997 I started my studies. Yeah. <laughs> so you can count the years now how many. <laughs> I see you have Epic Games Launcher installed in your computer. Do you play Fortnite? <laughs> <laughs> Do I have? Uh, no, I think it's something. Uh, Epic Game. Ah. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, this is. No, no. This, this is only. This is the 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 3D 3D rendering software. What I have. Yeah, uh, yeah. We uh, believe. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, really. <laughs> no, no. I don't. No, I don't. I don't play. Thank but you. Maybe, but, 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 but maybe you can show me. Then I start to play. To jest czas państwa pytanie. Actually, I like the the change. Yeah, like like every I think, the people are like. They they always search for for something what they don't have. Yeah, if you have something, or or or, or you, they search for the change. If you have something, you want something different. If you have this, you want something different. My medium, actually. Uh, from pencil to watercolors, also acrylics, also also. Uh, Oil colors, not so often acrylic and oil, but uh, more pencil, markers, aquarel, uh, this kind of medias. Oh. Yeah. 
Jesz jeszcze pytania chyba już nie. W takim razie podziękujmy panu profesorowi wielkimi oklaskami za wysłuchanie.